What is going on guys, in today's video I will show you the top 5 best new tank builds in New World Eternum that are optimized for both PvE and PvP. As I will cover a lot of builds so not to spend too much time, for each setup I will give you a quick overview of its playstyle. Then as well I will explain the best skill tree setup, then what gear should you wear, then even how many attributes should you allocate for each stat and much more. So then moving over to the first build which is the sword and the warhammer. This setup focuses on crowd control and using your tankiness to do massive amounts of AUV damage while surviving huge amount of enemy hits. If you use the best skill tree build then both of these weapons will synergize perfectly to allow for a flurry of abilities that will leave the enemy target staggered, stunned and knocked down over and over again. So as our job will be to prevent the enemy from moving so then us or our team will be able to finish them off. Of course we won't be dealing the craziest amount of DPS, but the staggers and massive amount of survivability will be definitely worth the trade off. So let's take a look at the build. For our gear choice we will go with the heavy armor, as this will give us the maximum amount of defense and will enable us to use the best shield in the game. Also since our build's primary objective is to stun and tank, so going full heavy is a no brainer. Next we have the attributes and we want to get from 300 to 350 strength then 25 focus and 300 constitution. No matter at which level or gear score you currently are, pretty much just split your attributes to half, so put 50 points into strength and 50 in constitution. Next up we have our setup for the sword and shield. This skill tree is more focused on holding the enemy's aggro, increasing our defense and speed, and of course most importantly giving us some of the best defensive tools as well. And then again this is how it should look like for the warhammer. So then on the other hand this setup focuses on increasing our AOV damage and locking down your targets. The warhammer has the best AOV potential in the game and as a tank this is very useful for both PvE and PvP. So if you are interested in the best gear, perks, consumables and everything else then keep watching until the end of the video. Overall if you are looking for one of the best and most fun tank builds then here it is. Next let's take a look at another tank build which is the sword with a spear. This setup has become very popular in the recent updates, as its playstyle is focused on being able to quickly initiate a fight on a single enemy, then put them into a crowd control combination which then afterwards opens them up for a huge amount of damage opportunity. This build has an amazing survivability and he can pretty much outrun just about any enemy. So let's take a look at the setup, for our weight we have two options. So go full heavy or maybe decide to go with medium armor, as this build has quite a lot of CC and mobility, so you're not required to go full tank. However, I personally recommend to go with the medium armor, as this build has two ways of playing it, so be a tank with a high CC or be a melee bruiser that is super annoying and can do a huge amount of DPS. The latter option has higher risk but also higher DPS, and just overall in my opinion is more fun. Next we have the attributes and we should get 350 strength, 250 dexterity and 50 intelligence. But if you decide not to go all in on DPS, then you can sacrifice 100 dexterity for 100 constitution. Then next up we have the skull tree, and this is how it should look like for the sword and shield. This layout is focused around high bursts of DPS and survivability, while this is how it should look like for the spear, and this weapon's main focus is on crowd control and locking down the enemy as much as possible. So if you're looking for a super fun and CC oriented build then here it is. So moving over to the next build which is the sword and the hatchet. This setup's main focus is on utilizing its high mobility and crowd control of the sword and shield, while from the hatchet you will be able to kill priority targets have very incredible survivability and then escape from danger. This build can initiate a surprise engagement and then get the target caught in a crowd control loop that will most likely result in their death. If you are looking for very strong PvE and PvP build then here it is. So let's take a look at the build. For our gear choice we will go with the heavy category, as this will give us incredible amount of defense which we want to get as we are mainly a melee bruiser tank. There are also some players that prefer to go full bruiser and switch to the medium category. However, this specific setup is built to withstand very hard enemy hits. Next we have the attributes and we should get from 350 to 400 strength, then 100 dexterity, then 25 focus 
And finally, 150 constitution. Then next up we have the skill tree. And this is how it should look like for the hatchet. So this specific layout was structured around using the best skill in the game, the berserk mode. And then just buffing and supporting it with as many perks and other secondary skills as possible. Because of this setup we can do both, so be a melee bruiser or a full tank. And if you play it right, then we will never die. And then again, this is how it should look like for the sword and shield. So with this one, we increased our mobility even further. And buffed our hatchet weaknesses, which is not enough CC and backstab. Our primary objective will be to use sword and shield for defending and taking on enemy damage. And then switching to the hatchet for huge amount of damage and to catch or run away from the enemies. Overall, if you are interested in the best gear, perks, consumables and everything else, then keep watching until the end of the video. And if you are looking for super fun and high damage and high mobility sword and shield build, then here you go. Next up we have the sword and shield with the void gauntlet. This is a very off meta build which solely focuses on the void gauntlet to act as a support damage role that provides great group utility and self sustain. The damage from the void gauntlet is lackluster compared to other PvE builds, but this can be a fantastic option for tanks that are looking to play as the 4 DPS or just quickly fill into a DPS role when required. This setup can also be played in PvP, but mainly is structured around using in PvE. And then on the other hand, we will switch the sword and shield to withstand the enemy damage use our crowd control on the targets and just overall control the battlefield. So in short, this is a very powerful tank support build. And now let's take a look at the setup. And for our weight we are again going with the heavy armor. As in my opinion, almost all sword and shield builds should always go full heavy. Unless you are trying to be a melee bruiser. But for that you need super high endgame gear and skill to be in close range while not having the greatest survivability options at your disposal. Then as far as attributes, we want to get from 300 to 350 strength, then 100 intelligence, then also 25 focus, and finally 200 constitution. These stats are adjusted to decrease our cooldowns, increase our sword and shield damage and just overall give us good damage while not sacrificing our amazing survivability at the same time. Next we have our skill trees and this is how it should look like for the void gauntlet. So the setup is mainly built around being a good support. So that means buffing your teammates damage, holding the enemies aggro, doing big CC and at the same time having self sustain. And then again this is how it should look like for the sword and shield. So this setup is meant to give you a great mobility so you can keep up with your teammates while at the same time doing good damage and contributing to your team damage and buffs. If you are interested in the best gear, perks, consumables and everything else, then keep watching until the end of the video. Overall, if you are looking for an off meta tank build which is very powerful but not that popular in the current meta because of how complicated it is to build this setup, then well, here it is. Then next up we have the sword and shield with the great sword. This setup is a very fun and powerful melee bruiser which can deal significant amount of damage while also survive very tough enemies. In this build the greatsword is a powerful DPS tool with impressive cleave damage making it a strong choice for dealing with groups of enemies. While then on the other hand by using the sword and shield it is the backbone of our playstyle which we will use for mobility, defense, CC capabilities and much more. So with that said let's take a look at the build and for the weight we will go with the medium category. This will give us the perfect balance between dealing damage and having great survivability. Next we have attributes and we want to get 100 strength, then from 300 to 350 dexterity, then 25 focus and finally 200 constitution. To see a full stat breakdown and how I got all these numbers, you can look down here. I've also seen players going full DPS and having almost zero constitution, but in my opinion when you're still learning the game, it is wise to go with 50 or at least 100 constitution and even wear medium armor to mitigate the extra damage taken. However, if you're opting for higher constitution, then you want to maintain this split between strength and dexterity and hitting key attribute breakpoints when possible like we did right here. Then next we have our skill trees and this is how it should look like for the greatsword. So as we are quite tanky with the medium and 200 constitution, so that means that we can afford to go full DPS in our weapons and this is exactly what we did. All of these skills and perks will increase our damage and make us melt the enemy in a few hits. 
And then again, this is how it should look like for the sword and shield. So then on the other hand, for this one, we focus primarily on high crowd control and mobility, so we can catch enemies and then stun and interrupt them. So then we can switch to the great sword and do damage, or just in general our teammates can finish them off. Overall the sword is a very powerful weapon, and these skills will boost his potential to the max. And then for the last and final part, let's take a look at the best gear, buffs and consumables that pretty much all builds could use. And remember that this is just an example. So as far as armor goes, of course slowly but shortly, you want to get to 725 gear score. And for your medium or heavy armor, you always want to use the opal gem on your gear. And if you can, then try to get these perks like health, refreshing and freedom. Then as far as your weapons go, use the malachite gem on all of your weapons. Besides if you're being the main tank in PvE, as in that content you want to equip the Carnelian gem to taunt the enemies. And then for weapon perks, try to get keen, vicious and refreshing move, or anything else that will give you more health. And last but not least, for your runes, get the stone form, as it is very powerful to use in both PvE and PvP, because it can save us from getting one-shotted. And then for your consumables, you should already know what to do, so use honing stones for damage increase, Use attribute food for plus 40 attribute stats, and also don't forget about healing and regen potions, just in case if you get in trouble. And that's about it. So if you enjoyed this video, click like, subscribe and comment. If you're interested in more content, then check out my channel, and I will see you in the next one. So take it easy, peace.